Hello everyone out there in Rumble X and YouTube land. Welcome back to Diego Knows. I, of course, am Diego, and today we're going to talk some more about Swingers. That's right, Swingers from uh, 1996, a long time ago. A great movie. Uh, uh, it was very popular. It was an underground movie, okay? Our, it's one of those uh, independent films, very low budget. Uh, the people that were in it became famous later on, but there was no famous people in it. Like, okay, not, at least not at that time. Like I said, very low budget. This was, you know, just like a, it's like a, you could say it was like a film, like a film school, <laughs> you know, you know, project. Okay, uh, but but it's a real movie. It was a real movie. Uh, and I mentioned this in other videos, but real quickly here, uh, back in the late '90s, this movie came out in '96. Back in the in the '90s, okay, uh, the whole idea of these independent movies uh, becoming popular was was very nuanced. Okay, but it was gaining steam. It really was. I mean, they were making blockbusters from movies with a, with a shoestring budget. Unbelievable. It had never been done before. It had been done at least not in a long time. Uh, but these movies were going to the theater. There was no streaming back then, okay? Uh, these movies were going to theaters, all right? And then they would end up on the, on the video market, okay, where they got even more cult status, okay? A lot of people saw this movie. Uh, they saw it on, on VHS when it first came out, okay, on, from Blockbuster Video. That's how I first saw it. My brother had it. And... Uh, he bought it from Blockbuster Used, and you know we watched it together while I was on vacation from the Marines, and I was like, "This it was hilarious. It was great. It was great." Uh, what I really liked about the movie was that it talked about guy issues, things that men deal with as far as dating goes. You know, as far as the whole romance thing. You know, there's a ton, shit ton of movies from a female's point of view of this of this, this topic. Okay, very few from a man's point of view, and usually the ones are, are pieces of shit. Okay, sorry, something like, you know, with a, like a Ben Stiller or something, or, or Jason Bateman, or some shit like that, you know, some fucking beta male dude, you know, trying to get the hot girl, you know, making a fool of himself, till finally at the end she realizes she likes it, and get the fuck out of here with that noise, that's not realistic, okay, this movie is realistic, okay, um, John Favreau wrote this movie based on his own experiences, as a young man, uh, you know, struggling actor, which everyone in this movie is a struggling actor, you know, in Hollywood, they're trying to fucking make it, you know, and, and you know, they have needs like everyone else. They want to date, you know, and these girls, these hot girls, they all want to fuck like, you know, movie producers and shit and directors and stuff like that and, and casting agents, you know, they don't want to fuck some fucking overweight, you know, you know, ugly guy, you know, trying to get acting jobs, you know, and, and this movie, well, the movie doesn't say that straight out. It's implied. It's implied. Okay? Uh, you know, these women, these starlets, okay, they have a very short window. Okay? Like, they're between the ages of 18 and maybe 26. You know, that's their window to make it. Okay? That's when they're at their, at their hottest, at their most vivacious, okay? At their most voluptuous, at their most everything. Okay? Is during that, that bracket, right? There, those eight years. Okay, that's whenever you see a new hot girl who's an up-and-coming star, she's always in that age, okay? Because this is her opportunity to make it, okay? To reach A-list, okay? Usually how it works in Hollywood is any actor, even guys too, okay? What they'll do is they'll grab somebody, okay, for, uh, for a big budget movie. It's already got a star. You're not going to get that fucking job. It's already got a star. It's already got a co-star. All that shit's been done. But they'll grab someone okay, who showed up at the audition and put them in a minor scene, okay? Uh, that way that actor or actress can put that on her resume. Their, her agent's gonna use that as clout to get her auditions into bigger movies, okay? Um, and the reason for this is because they're cheap. Or if it's a low budget, let's say they can't afford, you know, $200 million to make a superhero movie, right? So how do you market that? If you got no star, how do you market that? Well, it's easy, okay? You'll market the whole concept of the superhero movie. Okay, uh, and you put unknown actors in there, okay? Because what you're gonna what you're gonna promote it as as that superhero team, like it was Fantastic Four. You're not gonna focus starring Pedro Pascal. You're, you're gonna do that. You're gonna be the Marvel Comics movie, you know, comic book movie for the first time in theaters. Fantastic Four, ba ba. You know, you have a lot of special effects. No famous people are in it. Okay, when the movie comes out, and if it does well, now everybody's gonna talk about the actors that were in that movie. Now they're gonna parlay that into getting more acting jobs where they are the star, where they are, their name is above the title of the movie, where they are doing the interviews and the magazine covers and all that kind of shit. But they got to they gotta work their way up to get there, okay? So something like this, 
okay, like, like a swingers, okay, they had no star power at all. So they had to focus, so they had to promote it as, okay, well, the concept. Okay, what's the concept? It's about guys trying to get laid, uh, out of work actors, struggling actors trying to get laid in LA. Boom, okay, and let's put some nice songs in there. And they did, they picked out some really good songs. Uh, I already said it before, most of the budget in the movie went towards getting the rights to the certain songs. You got a lot of stuff there from like the Rat Pack, you know, you got like Tony Bennett in there. I know you got some Dean Martin in there, okay, and more. You know, there's, there's some swing music in there. You know, it's it's you and me in the bottom of the street tonight. You know, stuff like that. Uh, you even got like some old '80s songs, which I'm sure didn't cost very much, like Heart. You know, uh, Magic Man by Heart. That's in there. Okay, so there's a lot of these songs that are in there because that's all they had to promote the movie. Like I said, Vince Vaughn was a, was a nobody back then. Okay, uh, John Favreau was a nobody. Heather Graham was a nobody. Okay, Ron Livingston was a nobody. Okay, all these actors were nobodies back then. Okay, they're somebody's now especially John Favreau. He's like one of the most famous, you know, sought after uh, Hollywood directors uh, working right now. I mean, the guy fucking started the Marvel Cinematic Universe. He, he did the first Iron Man. He's the one that cast Robert Downey Jr. as Iron Man. Okay, that, he did that. And then he created The Mandalorian uh, for Disney Plus, for Lucasfilm. Okay, he directed Elf. He directed a lot of stuff. Okay, uh, you know, especially for Disney too, like the Jungle Book, uh, the CGI Jungle Book and the CGI Lion King. And I guess he's doing Mufasa too, you know. So, uh, yeah, he, he's, he's a big name now in Hollywood. He, has, he still acts a little bit like he was in Deadpool versus he had, a, he had a scene in Deadpool versus Wolverine playing Happy Hogan, the character he played in the Iron Man movies and the Avengers movies. So he's, he's still right, he's a big major star, but he was a nobody back then. He was a nobody. Okay, and this movie, and when you have, when you don't have the resources, you don't have the clout, the star power, you don't have a major studio backing you, okay, and you haven't done shit yet, you haven't proven yourself. <clears throat> what do you do? Uh, you know, you have to market it from what you have, and all he had was a script. He had a script in a very low budget, two hundred fifty grand, which uh, the director of the movie managed to um, to get that money by getting it from his dad. Okay, hence he became the director of the movie. Okay, Doug Lyman, he's also, he was also unproven. He's done a lot of stuff since then, you know, Born Identity and shit like that. All right, but um, this was his first movie too. Okay, so there was a lot of chances being made in this movie and they couldn't afford to put a lot of money into it. Okay, so you had to win the audience over, not with the sets, not with the special effects, not with the star power. Okay, you had to win them over with the music and you had to win them over with the script. Okay, the script needed to be good. Okay, obviously they couldn't afford expensive locations, you know, they couldn't afford a big production crew. That's why a lot of the scenes take place in these bars that are very, very dimly lit. Very dimly, you can barely see anything going on, you know, and it looks like someone just walked into a bar, you know, walking behind someone and walking in front of them, you know, going into a bar at night, you know, because that's what it was. That's what happened. <laughs> okay, <laughs> You know, so, uh, so you can tell. Okay, but of course they used all that to add to the, you know, to the, um, the flavor of the movie, you know, you wanted it to be like that. You wanted to see what it's like to be a, a young man, out of work, struggling actor, a dating in Hollywood. And that's what it was about. But I think what won people over wasn't location or the music or any of that stuff. I think what won everybody, what won me over was the script, was the subject matter, okay? Um, chick flicks always deal with dating for them, okay? They always do that, okay? Look at Sex and City, that's a whole fucking series uh, and movies and spinoffs based on that concept of dating, being a woman and having to date, being single in a big city, you know, and the struggles of dating, okay? Now that show was bullshit, uh, despite the fact that I reviewed every fucking episode of that show. It's on this channel, look it up, okay? Uh, and that movie was not very realistic at all because you had all these fucking, you know, the point zero 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 one percent of the most eligible men out there, all handsome, good looking, you know, rich, Charming, smart, great in bed, you know, single, straight, no kids, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, like, like these, the, these uh, mildly attractive middle-aged women. Those were the only guys that were hitting on them. You know, like get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like some guy, some fucking fried cook from KFC, never hit on Samantha. Are you out of your fucking mind? You know, but yeah, she's got like these like multi-million air fucking like hotel executives falling in love with her. Are you out of your fucking mind? Maybe when she was younger and she had bigger tits, but not, not when she's like 45. Get the fuck out of here. Nobody believes that shit. And she's a slut on top of that. Okay. High value men do not want to date sluts. They don't. I know sex is not going to tell you that, but it's true. We don't want to. Well, fuck you. 
but we won't put a ring on it. You know why? Because it would it would make us a, a, a laughing stock amongst other men, amongst society, amongst other women. You know what the fuck? But but no one talks about that, or, or you know, or, or ex extrapolates on that on Sex in the City. You know that dating a slut does not make a man high value; it makes him low value, which is why men don't do it. But you're never going to see that on an episode of Sex and the City. You're not going to see that anywhere in Hollywood today, not in 2024. No. Women fucking all sorts of guys. That's empowering. You know? It's, it's not. You're actually losing power. Okay? And then these same women are in their 40s and shit wanting to know why guys, why those high value men don't want to fucking put a ring on it. They don't want to fucking take them seriously. They, wanna, they don't want to be in a monogamous relationship with them. They don't want to fucking, you know, fly them to fucking Rio on the weekends. They don't want, you know why? Because you're a fucking whore. That's why. That's why. You're used up. You don't marry women like that. High value men do not marry women like that. Okay, so what do you got left? You got the guys that you rejected in your 20s. Well, they don't want you either now. Because now they're getting girls in their 20s. Okay, because they got more money now. They got more confidence now. They got more resources now. You know, so what do you got? You, you know what you got? You got fucking cats. You got fucking cats, all right? But I know, I know, I, I digress. We're talking about swingers, right? Okay, dating uh, in LA, okay, as a struggling actor, okay? And obviously, uh, within the industry, a lot of guys can relate to that. You know, I'm sure there's a lot of actors that have watched this movie and, and had a blast, you know, because it's, it's so realistic, especially when you're struggling. Now, just to get, just for the record, okay, uh, I know that Hollywood loves to make movies about struggling actors that finally make it, okay? Uh, but the majority of actors, it's bullshit, okay? A lot of these actors that you see today, okay, in movies, all right, in TV shows or in streaming, whatever the fuck it is, all right? A lot of these actors did not really have to struggle. Okay, you're gonna notice, uh, you know, we all know about nepotism in Hollywood. Well, that, that's very true, okay? A lot of these actors, you won't realize it, are actually uh, the nephew or the niece of a famous uh, Hollywood producer, or they're the, uh, they're the daughter or son of, of another actor, famous Hollywood actor, or, you know, or they were born wealthy. You know, it looked like someone like Daisy Ridley, you know, uh, Ray, you know, people are like, oh my God, she's such a great actress. You know, if only they hadn't put her in those Star Wars movies, she would have had an incredible career. She's so talented and blah, 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 you know? And now nobody's hiring her anymore because of those damn Star Wars movies, it's unfair to her, you know? You know, all these apologists. Okay, Daisy Ridley's family owns a shitload of real estate in fucking London, okay? She was born wealthy, okay? She never had to fucking wait tables, okay? She never had to fucking clean a hotel room. Okay, she never had to do a goddamn fuck. She never had a waitress, okay? All she did was stay in her fucking multi-million dollar penthouse condo while she went on auditions after her mom and dad put in a good word for her, okay? So don't give me this fucking shit, okay, that she's struggling and it's not fair. Get the fuck out of here, okay? You, that, that happens to a lot of actors out there. A lot of people you would not, not even realize Okay, you know, look at someone like Jason Patrick. I know he's not a big deal anymore, but in the 80s and 90s, he was a big deal. Jason Patrick, oh my God. You know, that fucker's, yeah, you know, how difficult is it to be an actor when your grandpa's fucking Jackie Gleason? Okay, oh yeah, you left that out, didn't you? You left that out, okay, when they were promoting you, didn't you? You, you see what I mean? It's a lot of shit like that that you don't even realize it. You don't even know, Emma Roberts, there's another fucking a TV actress out there, okay? Yeah, it probably, I'm sure she had to struggle a lot to get acting jobs when her fucking dad is Eric Roberts and her fucking aunt is Julia Roberts, okay? You know, you know, I mean, a lot of these actors, you don't even realize it. You don't even fucking realize it, you know? Uh, so, uh, no, no, it's it's not, it's, it's you know, the whole idea of the struggling actor from fucking Jerkwater, Nebraska, who comes to Hollywood and makes it, okay, it's so minuscule, it's not even worth mentioning. The people that make it as actors, okay, are the ones that fucking have connections, okay? They know somebody who knows somebody, okay? They have an in, okay? And, and that's the truth, and that's the truth. You know, uh, you see that a lot, and that's all of Hollywood. It's not just the actors, it's the writers, too. You know, you know, the Game of Thrones. Look at fucking Game of Thrones, right? Uh, who, who, are the, who are the showrunners of that? Uh, David, uh, uh, David Benioff and David Weiss. Okay, those two guys created the Game of Thrones. They got the rights from fucking H.R. Martin to make the show, right? Okay, well, well, you know, now they're not doing much, okay? But, you know, why did, why did anybody even, why did HBO even hire them? When they're really unproven, they haven't really done that much. 
Okay, well, they, they did it because fucking uh, David, David Benioff's dad is the fucking president of the goddamn Federal Reserve. Okay? So guess what? If Warner Brothers ever needs some money, you know, it's probably going to, you know, be easier if you hire the president of the fucking Federal Reserve who makes all the goddamn money for the United States of America uh, if you're, you hired his son. You know, it might help you get a loan. You know what I mean? I mean, this is the shit that happens, all right? So don't give me this fucking bullshit about struggling actors or struggling people in Hollywood, all right? These fucking actors and shit that you feel so sorry for, get the fuck out of here. They didn't have to struggle. Not the way we do. Not the way normal people do. You know? And I'm not I'm not a hypocrite either. Look at me. I mean, who's my favorite actor? Who's my idol? Sylvester Stallone. Now, y'all know about Sylvester Stallone. He was broke when he wrote Rocky. He lived in his shitty fucking apartment. He only had $100 in the bank. You know, they offered him $250,000 for Rocky, and he would not sell it unless they cast him as the star. Blah, 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 all that kind of shit. You hear all that stuff all the time, right? Like, he had to sell his dog, okay? Because, you know, or else he wasn't going to eat. That kind of shit. Yeah, but what you, what you don't hear about is that his dad owned, like, fucking 12 hair salons in fucking New York. Okay, and that he was actually grew up pretty fucking wealthy. Grew up in boarding schools. Okay, he went to fucking high school and college in Switzerland. Okay, his parents paid for his education at the University of Miami. He dropped out like a couple of credits shy of graduation. So that means he did almost four years. Okay, he backpacked in Spain. He was doing all this fucking shit before he was even fucking 25 years old. Okay. The reason he was broke when he wrote Rocky was because his parents got tired. His dad got tired of him being a fuck up. And they cut him off. That's why he was doing porn. Okay, that's why he had to sell his dog. That's why fucking him and his wife were living in a shitty fucking uh, studio apartment. Okay, that's why. Because his dad cut him off. Okay, because his dad had been financing all his bullshit. All his fucking expulsions from universities. All his partying. Okay? Th that's why. But he fucker grew up wealthy, okay? So don't give me this shit. I'm not saying he didn't struggle. He did, but he didn't struggle the way a normal person struggles. You see what I mean? That's what I'm talking about. Okay, but you're not going to know that. You're not going to know that. <laughs> anyway, let's talk about swingers here, okay? I just had to say that because a, a big part of the mythology of this movie is how much John Favreau had to struggle. And I think, I think John Favreau actually legitimately did have to struggle. I might have to do some more research on him, but as far as I know, he grew up like upper middle class, Okay, I know he was born in Flushing, New York, uh, but he was living in Chicago, okay, working at the Improv Olympic. That's a comedy club in Chicago. I've been there many, I used to take girls there all the time. And that's where he met Ron Livingston, okay, who's also in this movie, okay. He's on some fucking show now, I forgot what it is. But anyway, he, he's, he's doing a lot, he's still doing it. He's also, to me, he's gonna be Burger from fucking the Sex and the City, all right. Uh, but he was also in Office Space, you've seen him before. He's in Band of Brothers. Uh, that World War II HBO miniseries with Tom Hanks and Steven Spielberg. Uh, so he's done, he's done a lot. He's got a lot on his resume. Uh, last year, he was, he played uh, Barry Allen, Ezra Miller's dad, <laughs> in the Flash movie, which was an abortion. All right, but he's still around. Anyway, so he's in this movie too. <clears throat> well, he was friends with John Favreau in Chicago. They both decided to move to LA to make it as an actor. Okay, and uh, and that, that's also the characters they play in this movie. Mike Peters is John Favreau, and uh, Rob Rob something is fucking Ron Livingston. Okay, and they play friends that moved from New York, not Chicago, to LA to make it as actors. Okay, but you know uh, Rob still has to act, call his dad, his parents, and ask for more money because he hasn't really got any jobs. That kind of thing, <clears throat> you know. So it's very realistic as far as a struggling actor. Me being from Chicago, you know, I used to wait tables in Chicago when I was young. You know, I think I talked about that a lot when, in my Sex in the City videos, and I knew a lot of actors. A lot of guys my own age, women too, my own age, there were models, there was actors that were going to auditions, they were trying to make it, they were taking classes, okay, stand-up comedians, musicians, all that shit, all that artsy-fartsy uh, shit that you do when you're in your 20s, okay? I was a part of that whole scene in Chicago, in downtown Chicago, because I worked in downtown Chicago, you know, and it wasn't a shithole back then like it is now, I just got back from there, okay, it looks like shit, okay, but anyway, uh, <clears throat> so anyway, this is about so, a bunch of young 20-something guys in L.A., dating and trying to get acting jobs okay uh mike peter's character uh specifically is heartbroken he's still missing his ex-girlfriend michelle who he left back in chicago and she's already fucking somebody else okay and he's all in new york sorry she he left her back in new york in this movie it's new york okay and she's fucking somebody else and he's heartbroken he wants her to come back but he's not sure about it his friend uh trent walker played by vince vaughn 
the very affable Vince Vaughn, who's the life of the party. He's got all the funny one-liners. He knows how to tell a story. He's full of self-confidence. He loves to flirt. He loves to fucking party. You know, he knows he's the bomb. Okay, he knows he's money, and he's ready to party, okay? He has no problem telling a, a hot girl that, okay? Well, anyway, uh, he's flirting with a waitress in, in Vegas, okay? And, of course, you know, Mr. fucking Mike Peters, Mr. Male Feminist, is giving him shit about it. But, uh, but Trent is just trying to get Mike out of his funk. To quit, to quit acting like a little fucking bitch and crying about his ex-girlfriend and go out there and let's get you fucking laid. And that's what he's trying to do. Uh, it's not working out very well uh, for Mike because uh, he only had $300 he, he could afford to spend in Vegas and he only wanted to gamble 100 of it. Well, he lost most of it, okay? Uh, meanwhile, uh, Trent made some money. Uh, he got lucky on the craps table, okay? And, and so, of course, you know, um, uh, Mike is feeling sorry for himself, all right? So anyway, uh, Trent is flirting with the waitress. Her name is Christy. Okay, and he tells her, hey, listen, you and one of your hot friends come meet us at this bar at this time, blah, blah, blah. She agrees to it, like, oh, yeah, you know, and Mike is flabbergasted about how easy it is for Trent to flirt with girls because Mike cannot flirt. He hasn't been on a date in three years. He hasn't dated anyone else in, in six years. He has, and he sure as hell hasn't been on a date with any girl since he moved to fucking L.A., okay, despite the fact that his ex-girlfriend's back in New York fucking somebody else, all right? So, and he still wants her back, <laughs> okay? So, anyway... <clears throat> I was checking his voicemails and stuff. So he's flabbergasted by this, but the truth is he's just scared, okay? Uh, the movie's not gonna tell you that, but if you read between the lines, if you're a man and you and you, were, you could relate to a guy like Mike Peters, we've all felt that way at some time. He basically feels invisible to women. Women are not attracted to him. The only girl that was ever, that really liked him, for, for loved him for who he was, was his ex, Michelle, and he feels comfortable with her. He doesn't feel comfortable talking to a new girl. He's afraid he's gonna be rejected. He's afraid he's gonna be judged. Okay, because he's not a successful actor yet. He's still trying, he still lives in a shitty apartment. He's struggling, you know, to, to fucking get acting jobs and stuff, you know, so he's not in a good place, okay? He doesn't have the self-confidence that Trent has, all right? So anyway, <clears throat> they go to a breakfast restaurant, okay, because they, they've been there all night in Vegas, all right? I know, it's kind of like a diner-like place, okay? And Mike, like I said, Mike is complimenting Trent on how easy it was for Trent to flirt with that waitress, and now supposedly they're going to meet up with him after they're, after they're done eating breakfast here at this restaurant. They're going to go to this bar, because in, in Vegas, the bars are 24 hours, okay? I know I've been to Vegas, all right? And uh, they're going to meet the, meet uh, Christy, the waitress, and one of her hot friends, okay, once they're done eating breakfast, all right? So Mike is really amazed at how uh, Trent pulled that off, right in front of him, no less, Okay. You know, and he tells he tells her that, you know, um, uh, Trent tells uh, Mike that, you know, that girls love that kind of stuff. They love the flirting. Okay, they love to joke. You know, they love it when guys joke around with them and flirt with them and stuff, you know? Okay, you know, they don't go for the sensitive shit. He tells, he tells Mike that. They don't go for the sensitive shit. And that's fucking true. That is true. Okay, if you watch movies from the 80s and shit and the 70s, okay, they're always telling, you know, well, even TV shows like the Brady Bunch or some shit that came out. Okay, they're always, well, there's always the same shit. They're always telling the guy, the women are always telling the men, quit acting like men and get in touch with your feminine side. You start to be more sensitive. You know, why don't you just tell me your feelings and quit holding it in, sweetheart? That kind of fucking shit, which is the worst. Nothing, nothing dries up a fucking pussy more than a goddamn sensitive mangina, okay? Fuck that noise, all right? But unfortunately, uh, there's a huge generation, and there's more now than there was in 1996, but there's a huge generation of men that were raised by single moms, okay? And this is what they taught them, and I know they weren't doing it on purpose. They weren't trying to be mean or anything like that. They were trying to raise their, their sons the best way they knew how. Okay, respect the women, treat them, be polite to them, you know, open doors, be chivalrous. They're talking, okay, but the women that deserve that shit don't fucking exist anymore. And unfortunately, that's the truth. And they haven't existed in a long fucking time. This isn't a, a man coming home from fucking fighting the Nazis in 1945. Okay, this is the fucking 90s, all right? Women are out there fucking getting laid like a motherfucker, okay? Because it's easier for a hot girl to get laid than it is for a hot guy, all right? Okay, and, and they're being celebrated for that shit. Okay, for Christ's sake, Sex and the City came out the same year this movie did. All right, where it's all about women out there getting theirs. Okay, so don't give me this fucking shit that these women are these pure virgins that need to be protected and respected because those women don't fucking exist anymore. Okay, there's way too many fucking single single moms out there uh, to the contrary of that point. All right, but anyway, so um, so Mike is still old school. He was raised by his mom, I'm guessing. Okay. Okay, so he's all about respect the woman, you know, keep your space, don't make eye contact with her, don't flirt with her, because you're going to come across as a creep, don't look at her too long, because she's going to think you're a rapist, you know, that kind of stuff, so he's always like, you know, <clears throat> I want to be a gentleman, I just want to be polite, I want to be, you know, all this shit that fucking turns women off, <clears throat> all right? 
Okay, and, and Trent tells you know girls love that kind of stuff. They love uh, you know guys that flirt with them. You know that the, the, you know that let them know, hey, I'm looking at you, and I'm not looking at you as a friend. I'm looking at you the way a man looks at a woman. You know, and he tells him that. You know, uh, women don't go for the sensitive shit. Okay, and, and he tells you, listen, listen there, Mikey. Okay, they know. You think they don't know what you want? They know. Why do you think they dress up the way they do? Why do you think they spend a lot of time making their hair and doing their makeup and wearing those clothes? Okay, they know you're looking. They want you to look at them. They know what they look like to you. They know the effect that it has on you. You know, you're over here trying to pretend that it has no effect on you. Dude, they can see right through that shit. You know? They know what you want. You know? When you pretend, it's just a waste of their time. You know? So don't apologize for it. And that's true. That's fucking true. You know, if you treat, you know, uh, if you treat a hot woman that you're attracted to, that you want to get to know better, if you know what I mean, don't treat her like a fucking friend. Don't treat her like you're fucking like 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 you're fucking like you have no sex drive, okay? That you that you can't you know that, that you're not attractive because w women they want they want to attract guys. That's why they make themselves look the way they do, okay? They they want the attention. They want to be acknowledged. You know, no no girl wants to fucking look all hot with her tits sticking out and shit like that. You know, with her tight ass behind a fucking a black leather mini skirt and her heels. No girl wants to do all that just so she can be ignored by men. No, they want the compliments. They want to be noticed, okay? And if you like a girl and you start treating like, oh, well, all this shit that you did has no effect on me, whatever, you're wasting her time. You're wasting her time. What do you got to fucking lose? So she doesn't like you, big fucking deal. Since when is she the only fucking bitch in the whole goddamn world? Exactly, you know? Like your whole fucking life depends on what this one fucking girl thinks of you. Fuck her. Fuck her, okay? What matters is what you think about yourself. You see what I mean? Okay, and, and that's the problem with Mike, is he has no fucking self-confidence. <clears throat> he's so scared that a girl's not going to like him that he's not willing to take a chance. <clears throat> you know? You know, so that's it. He tells him, oh, but I want to act, act like a gentleman, you know? I want to show respect, you know? And, 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 and Trent's like, fuck this, man. What the fuck is wrong with you? Respect? Respect, dude. You know what? You want women to respect? They respect honesty. You know? Respect my ass. Okay? They go through a lot to look good, okay? Just let them know that it's working. This is true, holy shit. Yeah. Movies don't talk about this stuff. They never talk about this stuff. Because any movie in Hollywood that comes out has to be filtered through the lens of the fucking feminist fucking censors and shit. You think they're gonna fucking let a man tell another man what to do to fucking get laid? Fuck no. That would make them rewrite this whole scene. Oh no, you have to bring her flowers, you know, and poetry. Get the fuck out of here. My God. Like that girl hasn't been fucking uh, double stuffed again, hadn't gotten fucking DP'd in the fucking bathroom before. Get the fuck out of here. Anyway. So that's going on. And this is sh this is true. This is true. What Trent's saying is completely true, man. I stand behind it 100%. And I'm a man, you know, and I've dated lots of women. And what he's saying is absolutely 100% true. And that's why I'm so shocked is that the movie is so honest about this. Because movies don't do that. Watch any fucking chick flick where the guy's trying to get laid. It's always the same old bullshit, man. You need to call her, tell her how you really feel. Get the fuck, that, that doesn't fucking help you get laid. Okay? And if you're not getting laid, that means the women aren't attracted to you. How the fuck is a woman going to fucking fall in love with you? She ain't even fucking attracted to you. See what I mean? <clears throat> anyway. So he tells, he tells Mike, he said, look, there's nothing wrong with letting women know that you're money and that you're ready to party. And that should be the fucking line of this movie. That should be the, the catchphrase of this movie. There's nothing wrong with letting a woman know that you're money and that you're ready to party. Okay, and that's true. It's true, man. Men quit, don't do that anymore. They don't act like men. You know, they act like these fucking, these, uh, limp sexual people, these asexual people. You know, they're not attracted to anything. That's because all they do is fucking watch porn. You know, and, it, and it's fucking true. Men aren't out there. They're not going to colleges anymore. They're not getting married anymore. You know, the fucking, the, the divorce, the, <clears throat> the marriage rates have plummeted. Men aren't getting married. You know why? They're not getting married because they know what marriage does to men. They saw what it did to their, da their parent, their dad. They see what it does to their fucking older brother or their cousin, or their uncle. They see what it does. 
Why would they want to sign up for that? Why would they want to go through a divorce? You know? Because you see that guy, guys get divorced are getting divorced by their wives. The, the wives are 70% of all divorces are instigated by wives. <clears throat> Alright? So the guy didn't fucking even see him coming. He didn't even do anything wrong. You know? He just his wife just said, hey, I don't love you anymore, and I'm fucking some other guy. Here. I'm taking the house and the kids. And there's nothing you can do about it. If you want, you can spend all your fucking life savings to fight me, but you're still going to lose. So what the fuck does it matter? <clears throat> They're seeing this happen in real time. They don't want that. They've seen this happen to other people. They don't want that to happen to them. So fuck it. <clears throat> fuck it. Get a hooker. <clears throat> it's, I'm sad. it's sad, but it's true. <clears throat> it's true. There's nothing out there that, that, that men want from women other than fucking sex now. They sure as fuck don't want a marriage. You know, it's sad. Because I'm still from that generation. I'm old enough to be from the generation where, you know, I want to get married again. I want to fucking, you know, have romance. I want a relationship. I want all those things, okay? Because I know that when it's good, it's really good. These kids today don't know that. And they're not going to know that because they see what happens to the people that believe that and what happens to them. And they don't want that for themselves. So you can't really blame them. I mean, look, look at someone like, look, look, what, what, Rob Patterson, uh, who else is there? Uh, Rob um uh, Tom Brady, fucking uh, Will Smith, <clears throat> um, Sylvester Stallone, my, my idol, you know, uh, who else? Okay, well, uh, that's, that's four good examples right there, okay? Uh, what do all these guys have in common besides the fact that they're all rich and famous, you know? They all got cheated on, very publicly too, Okay? JFK Jr., there's another one. I forgot to mention, I don't you know, he passed away, but, you know. Yeah, all of them got cheated on. Publicly. That means everyone found out about it. Everyone knew about it. They were all cucked by their partners or their, or their spouses. Okay? And these are the fucking best of the best. Okay? These are what, what men spend their whole lives trying to be like and never get there. And they got fucking cucked. Okay? They got fucking cut. Okay? So if they're going to get fucking cheated on by their wives, by their feminist wives, what the fuck chance do any of us have? <clears throat> you see what I mean? This is what I'm talking about. All right? <clears throat> so why the fuck would you want to sign up for that? It's sad, but it's true, man. Like, uh, not, don't look at me, man. I, I still believe in romance. Despite the way I talk, that's because I talk real. I'd rather be romantic and real the romantic and fake. <clears throat> All right, moving right along. <clears throat> uh, so Mike tries to flirt uh, with the dinner waitress, okay? Because there's this, you know, you know, she's there, okay? And it says here, oh, well, it, it says, ma'am, it says here uh, that you have breakfast served at any time. Well, uh, I, I think I would like uh, uh, the scrambled eggs and pancakes uh, in, in the Age of Enlightenment. <laughs> and she's just like, and for you, like, like, like that, <clears throat> like she didn't give a shit about that at all, right? <clears throat> he was trying to be funny, okay? You know, <laughs> and uh, <coughs> she ignores the remark because it's stupid. And Mike blames himself when she walks away. He tells Trent, oh, my God, that was so stupid. I shouldn't have said that. Like like, like some fucking white trash waitress, okay, is going to catch some uh, some obscure French philosophical reference. I mean, oh, my God, you know. You know, and then later when she's walking by the table, he says, uh, ma'am, ma'am. And she just tells him, hang on there, Voltaire. You know, <laughs> so he's like... <laughs> So, so she did know what the Age of Enlightenment was. Okay, <clears throat> you know. Anyway, so later on, uh, they meet. Uh, he's just making a fool of himself like he always does, okay? He has no game with women. It's pretty obvious. He tries. It, it, it's endearing to see him try, but he has no game. He can't make women laugh, not in a good way. Uh, he doesn't know how to flirt. He doesn't know, you know. He, he's he's so insecure. It, it comes across in his, in his body posturing and everything, okay? His tone of speech, you know. This guy's really out of his element, okay? Um, if Trent wasn't there, there would be no women there with him, okay? So anyway, so they meet the girls at the bar, okay? And the new girl that's there, uh, her, uh, we don't know what her name is, okay, uh, in the movie, okay? But she's she, she's referred to as Dorothy because she's dressed like Dorothy from fucking Wizard of Oz, all right? Because I guess she says she works at the MGM Grand. So she plays, she plays Dorothy at the MGM Grand, all right? Uh, so that's why she's dressed like that with the Goldilocks and all that kind of fucking shit, right? Okay. So at the bar, okay, uh, so I'm sorry, her name is Lisa. Sorry, her name is Lisa. I, 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 sorry about that. Okay, she's playing Dorothy uh, from Wizard of Oz, but her real name is Lisa, okay? But she's dressed like Dorothy, okay? 
Okay, and she works at the MGM Grand. And Mike tells her, oh, we're not in, I guess we're not in Kansas anymore. And the girl's just like, like, like that's, that's not funny. <laughs> so he's like, so if you look at his face, Mike realizes that was a stupid joke. It didn't, it didn't go over, right? And uh, he bombed, okay, and they asked him, so, uh, uh, so what do you do? And he's like, oh, well, I'm a comedian. <laughs> Like I said, the script is very good. The script is very, very good. And the fact that John Favreau is willing to make himself the lead into the into the butt of all the jokes in the movie is pretty it's pretty damn brave. It's pretty damn brave. Okay, I'm gonna stop my review right here, but I'll be back shortly to continue my review of Swingers. I thank you very much for watching this long and I'll see you soon on the next one. Bye.